that turned on? Yep. Okay, so the rules of exponents are these. So this says if the base is the same, so the x is the same, to put these together, you can do it, and you add the exponents. So if we had a to the 5 times a to the 4, that would be a to the 9. That goes for, these are two bases that are multiplied. That also goes if we have divide. The rule is that you take the top one and subtract the bottom, whatever that is. So we talked about this already in terms of canceling. Look at which one's bigger, the smallest amount cancels, and whatever you have left over is the answer. So for example, if we had 3 to the 4 over 3 squared, using the rule, this would look like 4 minus 2, which is squared, which is 9. That would be using the rule. But remember what we said is, if you look at them and you say, okay, well, there's 2 on the bottom and 4 on top, so two of them cancel, and you'd have two left on top, right? So that's the same answer, but without having to subtract. And I think it's actually better to do that because if we subtract, if we had something like this, 5 to the 4 over 5 to the 5, and we use the rule here, this looks like 5 to the 4 minus 5, which is 5 to the negative 1. <coughs> What's 5 to the negative 1 equal? A fifth, or 1 over 5. But that's a little bit trickier to think about. Whereas if we just used uh, cancelling, we would say, okay, well, there's four fives on top oops, and five of them on the bottom, so four of them cancel, and there'd be one left. So there's one on top because everything cancels off the top, 1 over 5. So if there's 5 on the bottom, so all of them except one cancel, and you, so you get without negative exponents. Okay, so I don't want you to get hung up on I have to use a rule. No, common sense that they cancel and that's what's left, and it would be on the bottom because there was more on the bottom is, is good for that. Three. one base and sort of two exponents. So one exponent in a bracket, one out of the bracket, you multiply those exponents. So if we had a to the 5 all to the 4, that would be the same as a to the 20. But also a to the 4 to the 5 is the same answer. That will come in handy later, just sort of noticing that. That seems like common sense right now, but later it will help you. We'll say, remember we said it didn't matter which way, you could actually switch these around? Sometimes that'll help you, okay? Four. Four is if you have two numbers or letters or two things that are multiplied in a bracket with the exponent outside, then you can apply that to both. So this would be the same as a to the n times b to the n. So an example, if we had 2x cubed, then this would be 2 cubed times x cubed, which is 8x cubed. And that works the same as if it's a fraction. If 
So two thirds all to the fourth power would be two to the fourth over three to the fourth. Uh, 16 over 81. One place where people go wrong with this or aren't sure what to do for some reason just because it's a one, sorry. So if we had like one fifth squared, what's one squared? One. So this is one squared over five squared, which is one over 25. Okay, so say we had a negative exponent. So what a negative exponent is means divide instead. So this is to the negative 1 means divide by 2 instead of multiply by 2. So this is equal to 1 over 2. Now if we had something like 2 thirds to the negative 1, this is 2 to the negative 1 over 3 to the negative 1. And basically, it means if it's on the bottom and has a negative exponent, you move it to the top. If it's on the top with a negative exponent, you move it to the bottom because you're doing the opposite. So this would be the same as 3 over 2, both to the positive 1, which you don't usually write the positive 1, but basically a negative exponent flips it over. Right, so with, the, with this, you wouldn't need to write the negative 1 on both pieces. You just say, okay, well, I've got something to the power negative 1. That means flip over the fraction. So this is equal to or the same as y over 2x. Now, it can be a bit tricky if we have two b to the negative three. So people sort of mess this one up. So where the exponent is on the b, it's not on the two. So the 2 doesn't move to the bottom. And remember, this is 2 times b. They would both need to have an exponent if they wanted them both to move. So this would be 2 over b cubed. So the b is what has the exponent, not the 2. How would we move both b and 2? How would I have had to write it if I wanted both to move to the bottom? Right. 2b all to the negative 3 would be 1 over 2b cubed. Okay, so it doesn't have to be a negative 1. It can be a negative anything. But what moves either to the top or bottom is only the thing that the exponent is on, not anything else. So you have to be careful that that 2 is not attached to the b. It's 2 times b, so the 2 would stay on the top. Okay, those are the rules. So we're going to make super complicated expressions and try to simplify them. Okay, so that's what we're going to practice doing. Uh, let's say the instruction is to simplify each expression writing your answers with positive exponents.
So the key word is simplify. I don't really need to write the rest. To simplify, you want to end up with positive exponents and everything that cancels, cancelled. Okay, that would be to simplify. An expression is what? Everything I've written down so far is a mathematical expression. What's the difference between an expression and an equation? <coughs> an equation has an equal sign. So we didn't start any solving for x. That would be rearranging an equation. All we're doing is writing expressions and simplifying so far. Okay, so let's do some examples. Number one. So easy enough, I just wanted to put one example with the exponent on the bottom. So what has the negative 4? It's just the x, not the 3. So the 3 stays on the bottom and the x moves up. So this would be x to the 4 over 3. Now in calculus, you're going to want to write this a little bit different than this, and that would be with a 1 third times x to the 4. I want you to look at that. Do you agree that that's the same thing? So remember when we multiply fractions, I said any time you have, say, 5 times 1 third, that's the same as 5 over 1 times 1 over 3, which is 5 over 3. When you have two things that are multiplied, it's the same as writing it together as one fraction. So, or if we had 1 third times... 2 over 5, this is the same as 2 over 15. When you have one fraction, you can break it up to be 2. So this is the same as saying 2 times 1 over 15. It's the same as saying uh, 1 over 15 times 2. Well, how else could we write this exact same thing? Any ideas? Yeah, 1 times 2 over 15. Let's go back here. I could say 2 over 3 times 1 over 5. Would that be the same? Yeah. Those numbers, if you're multiplying, they can interchange. So what I did here is just flip the tops but not the bottoms. It's still the same thing. It's still 2 times 1 over 3 times 5. Okay, so in calculus, we're often going to take expressions that are like x to the 4 over 3, and you'll write it as a constant times the function. So this is very common, and you actually do that in the first step most of the time in calculus. Yes, yeah, but the rules in calculus make you write it like this first and then do the answer. So that's why we're just going to, either is fine. I'm looking for this as a final answer, but I want you to know that they are the same thing. So then when you see that later, or if we ever see it, then you know those are actually the same. It's just a different way to write it. Is that x cubed over, under, over 1? Is that, is that what we're going to write? Is it only 1? Oh, the x to the 4? Yeah. You could have a 1 on the bottom, yeah. Okay. But we don't usually write a one on the bottom. Okay. Yeah. But yes. Okay, number two. <coughs> so how could we rewrite this? The 5 and the 2 don't have a negative exponent, so they stay where they are, or we could write it in front. The other two both have negative exponents, so they switch places. So this would be 5x to the positive 4 over 2x cubed. So the exponent changes to a positive when you flip it to the other side. Now, is that a final answer that I would accept? No, because... 
we can simplify it. There is X's on top and bottom, so we can cancel them. You see it? So it's not quite done yet. So once you have positive exponents, it's easier to cancel. How many X's cancel? Three. Three, and we'd have one left on top. So this would be 5X over 2, which is the same as 5 over 2 times X. Number three. Okay, so we've got a bracket all to the four, but in the bracket there is that negative exponent. It's easier to deal with that now than later, but it really doesn't matter. So I'm going to do this two ways, just to show you the difference, and that they're both the same and equal. So the first one, that 4 has to apply to both things, both the 2 and the x in the bracket. So this would be 2 to the 4 and x to the, you multiply the exponents, so minus 3 times 4. So this would be 2 to the 4 times x to the minus 12. So now what? What's 2 to the 4? 16. That would move down to the bottom, so this would be 16 over x to the 12. Or 16 times 1 over x to the 12. They're both the same. Okay, so that's the answer. So what would be a second way that we could have done this? Yeah, get rid of the negative exponent first. So this would be written as 2 over x cubed all to the 4. That would be the second way. Either way is okay. Apply the exponent first or the negative first. So this is 2 to the 4 over x to 3 times 4. Okay, so that would be the two ways you could do that. Okay, there's a lot of negatives here. 2x to the negative 1 over y to the negative 3, all to the negative 1. So, uh, lots of options. You could get rid of the negative exponents in the bracket first and then worry about the outside. You could do that. Or you could apply the negative 1 to how many different things would we have to put the negative 1 on? On the 2, the x, and the y. So on three things in the bracket. Or what's a negative 1 outside of a bracket do? Flips it over. So we could flip it over and not have that. So there's lots of options to start. I see a negative 1 here. I want to flip everything over exactly as it is like that. And that's to the 1, which I now don't need to write, because to the 1 power is just 1. It's just whatever it is. That doesn't change anything. So I flipped. So you might write a little note there. Negative 1 flips over a fraction. Right? So you remember when you look at that, how did she do that? But nothing changed. It flipped over the whole fraction. None of the exponents changed yet. So I didn't apply it to anything. I just applied the flip. Now that x would go up to the top and that y would come down to the bottom. So this would be the 2 stays. That x is going to be to the 1 on top and the y is going to be to the 3 on the bottom.
Now, what if this same question, I decided to apply that negative one to all three things first? You have negatives times negatives. If you're not good with signs, this probably wouldn't be your best bet. But let's just say or. If I took that negative one and applied it to everything in the bracket, so 2 to the negative 1. x, we multiply the exponents. Negative 1 times negative 1. Negative 3 times negative 1. What's negative 1 times negative 1? Positive 1. Negative 3 times negative 1? Positive 3. So this would be 2 to the negative 1, x to the 1 over y to the 3. Do you see these are OK? The only thing that needs to change now is that 2 would go down to the bottom because it has a negative 1 exponent. All right, they're the same. And there's lots of ways you could do it. You could have, what, instead made the exponents inside positive first and then flipped the whole fraction. Right, so there's lots of ways to do it. They all end up with the same answer. Yeah. Um, if it's like negative two on the outside, could that be the better way to do it? Because you have to do more than just flip it. I would, yeah, right. yeah. Or I would probably make the exponents inside and then apply the negative two. Or uh, yeah, there's still lots of ways. We'll do one like that anyway. I need to adjust this because the paper isn't fitting how I have it. Try. Okay. There, that's going to work better. Okay. All right, number five. No negative exponents here, but lots of x's. Again, lots of ways to do it. You could apply that 3 to each of these first by multiplying the exponents, or you could simplify the inside and then apply the 3. What do you think would be the better one in this case? I would, because if we have to multiply this 3, so that would be a 9, a 15, and a 24. They're bigger, right? I would probably simplify first and then... So what does this equal? It is just one. These are, how many x's on top? Eight. Eight, right? Three plus five is eight, and eight on the bottom. They both cancel, and if everything cancels, it's left with a one. And what's one cubed? One times one times one. One. And that would be it. Okay, let's simplify the inside of the bracket and then worry about the negative 2 later. Okay, so there is two numbers in here. Do they simplify? Yeah, because five is, or 25 is 5 times 5, so one of the 5s will cancel. So we'd be left with just one 5 on top. What about the x's? Three of them cancel. How many would you be left with? One on the bottom. And the y's? Oh, that's tricky. I wouldn't just cancel them. I'd make the y a positive first or something. So, what, so there's a y on the bottom. This one comes down to the bottom would be a 2. 
So what we have so far would be a 5 on top, x, because the x is canceled. I just rewrote that y and I moved that y down. So how many y's do we have on the bottom? Three. There we go. So that would be the inside simplified. Now, what does the negative on the exponent outside of the bracket do? <coughs> flip. flip. You could apply the negative, but then you're getting more negative exponents. So I would do the flip. That negative is a flip. So what would a flip look like? x, y cubed over 5. I just put everything on the bottom on top and top on bottom to the 2. Now it changes the sign to positive. And you could have done that at the beginning if you wanted, but no, no exponents change on these when you just do that flip for the whole thing. It just flips the whole fraction and changes this sign, not the ones inside. And now we could apply that squared to each thing. So x squared, y, 3 times 2, over 5 squared. x squared, y to the 6th over Okay, questions about that? So you have to practice, right? They're well and good to watch me do it, but you will not remember those rules and when to flip and when to move them unless you try them. So you need to practice those. So what we're going to add in is radicals. Okay, so what's a radical? Square roots, cube roots, any root. Okay. <coughs> So why do roots go with uh, exponents or in the exponent section is because that's what they are. A root is an exponent. So a square root is that exponent one half, and then the regular exponent rules apply. A cube root, so this one is a square root. Cube root is a one-third. And fourth root, fifth root, sixth root, whatever root. In financial math, we do the 365 root when you're trying to solve some problems. Why 365? 365 days in a year. So if you're trying to solve, there's some certain questions in financial math that you would have to take the 365th root which you can actually do on a calculator or as either an exponent or there is a root button where you can actually put the, the, what root it is in. So you can have any root as long as it's positive. Okay, so what do the different roots mean when you're evaluating? So let's say that, okay, so this is a fourth root. When you first see roots in school, they don't show you all of these roots. Did I tell you we play this square root game in the car? It's my daughter's favorite game. She thinks I should go to her class and teach this square root game at school. It's not a fun game. She thinks it's fun, but she's really weird. So, yeah, so I started the square root game when they had to memorize their times tables because how would this on earth help with the times tables? Well, if I told her what a square root was, so I said the square root of 25 is what two numbers multiply to give 25, the same two numbers. 
So five times five, so those are doubles, right? So five times five is 25, so the square root of 25 is five. Square root of four, so then she doesn't know square roots, she just knows her times tables. So she has to think on the times tables, okay, one times one is one, two times two is four, because you really need to know those doubles when you know your times tables. Seven times seven is 49, square root of 49 is seven. So I call out a random number, it's a square root game. I would say 49, the two kids, which one does not find this fun at all, and she does, he thinks this is stupid and why should he have to do this, but she makes them. So I say 49, they race to see who says seven. I say eight, and what happens? There's no double that gives you eight as the answer. So they have to guess what the decimal would be. This is the square root game. So here's square root of eight. We don't know that. So what would they have to do? They'd have to say, well, what doubles near that? Nine. What's the square root of nine? Three. And what's the square root of four? Two. All of these in between have an answer, but it's just a decimal. So what one, two, three, four are between? So could you guess what they might? Uh, careful. I'm glad you said that because that's not right. And I like when people say things that are not right because the only time you learn in the world is if you do something wrong. Why is it not 0.25? So what would this be? 2.25, 2.5, 2.75, 3? Whoops. Oh. <laughs> do you see it? No. There's four in between. That means there's actually five intervals. Yeah, 2.2 .2 might work. 2.4, 2.6, 2.8, 3. There's a good guess. It's not quite right because a square root, doing this, dividing it up, what you're actually doing is saying that a square root function, we're going to learn about graphing in Chapter 2, is perfectly even. If this is 3 and, say, this is 0, then all of them are perfectly spaced apart. But they're not. Do you know what the squared function actually looks like? This. So they don't go linear, they're not equally spaced <coughs> apart, which would be a linear equation, that they go up the equal in increments. As they get closer to the number, these are closer together, these are further apart. So, but it's a good guess. If you needed to guess without a calculator, that's what you would do. Now, do you need to even be that specific? No, because if I gave you, oh, let's, let's just fill in the rest of this. What's the square root of zero? Zero. zero. Square root of one, one times one is one. Ooh, we don't know that one, but we know this. And there, so, yeah, that would be a good guess. Or seven, it doesn't matter, right? If you rounded 1.33, if you divide it into thirds, then that would be what it is, right? That would be 1.7. It might even be closer to 1.8, I don't know. We could do it on calculator and see, but it doesn't really matter. So how fun is that square root game? Not very, I know. She thinks that's like her friends would think this is awesome. So if I said like the square root of 120, is that, oops, is that a root that we know? What's 10 times 10? 11 times 11? 121, good. So that's really close to that, so we could guess that it's about 10.9, just close, something close. And as I said, you don't really need to count in between and make the number, just take a random guess close. You know it has to be a little less than 10. Okay? So what about cube roots, fourth roots? Like what if I had the cube root of eight? What other cube roots do we know? That one's two, because two cubed is eight. Two times two times two. 
what's the one that's three? Three times three times three? Twenty-seven. Uh, then they get harder. I don't really know any more than that, but you could figure it out. Uh, tens are easy. Like if I put a thousand in here, I already gave the answer. Ten. Yeah. Do you guys listen to the radio in the morning? That uh, thousand. I know I talked about this thousand dollar minute before. Did you hear it this morning? Did you hear the question? So I'll re recap what the game is. That they have one minute. They ask them ten questions. Each question's worth fifty dollars, which, by the way, only adds up to five hundred dollars if you add fifty ten times. But if they do get all of them right, they double their money and get a thousand. So if you get nine questions right, you only get $450, which is what the guy won today. Yeah, did anyone hear what the question was that he got wrong? Thousand times a thousand. And I think he knew it. I, I mean, he, he, you're just under pressure, right? But the nine-year-old, my, or my ten-year-old Emma, she says, that's a million. And then he said, a hundred thousand. She said, no, it's not. And she yells at the radio. Anyway, it's a million, and because it's six zeros, a thousand is three zeros. Six zeros would be, right? So a thousand times a thousand. That's the one he got wrong. So he went from from getting that one. I'm sure he's kicking himself, because if he had got that one question right, he would have won a thousand. Four hundred fifty is still good. Wouldn't you be happy with four hundred fifty? I only got three of the questions right. I did get the thousand times a thousand right, but I'm not good at knowing if it's Beyonce that won or whoever. You know, the kids correct me all the time, but I only actually got three right. One was about an atom, like in physics or in chemistry, the thousand times a thousand. And, I, and the other one was like a 50-50 guess. They gave two answers, and I guessed right. So I'm not very good at them. So I wouldn't call because it would be embarrassing. They ask too many, like, pop culture questions that I'm just not good at. But they always have a little math one in there that makes it easy. Oh, no, there was one that I got right in there today was uh, how many minutes are in three hours or something or five hours. Okay, so how do we use this stuff with exponents? So let me show you how we can write this. So this is the square root of x cubed. That's how you would read that. The square root of x cubed. Okay. Now I told you that in exponents, if we write An exponent multiplied like this, so m times n, you could also say n times m, the other way around. All right, so keeping that in mind, let's go over here. A square root is a half exponent. So this is 3 times a half, which is like... 3 times a half is 3 over 1 times 1 over 2, which is 3 over 2. Okay, I don't uh, write exponents with that little slanty line unless it's in it, or don't write fractions with that little slanty line unless it's in an exponent. Okay. You notice every time I write fractions, I have the lines nice and straight. That's so you can multiply the tops and multiply the bottoms without getting screwed up. But when it's in an exponent, you usually would write it slanted. Okay, so that would be, if you do that, you should fix that. I saw some guilty looks as soon as I said that, so. Uh, okay, so what does this have to do with it? Well, often, if we have the square root of x cubed, you could do the square root of x and then cube it. That's the same answer.
So that's still x to the 3 over 2. So why is it good to know that? If I wrote the square root of 4 cubed, I do not need to cube the 4 first, 4 times 4 times 4, get an answer, and then try to find the square root of it. Do we know the square root of 4 without the cube? So this is the same as the square root of 4 and then cube it. So 2 cubed, which is 8. Much easier. Do you see it? So be careful of that. If you can do the root, do the root first. If you can't, then, then there's other ways that will solve that. Okay. So, examples. So we're just going to rewrite the radicals as exponents and simplify. Here they are, 1, 2, 3, 4. So when there's no 2 showing or no number showing, that's the square root, 1 half power. So this is x to the 2 times 1 half, which is 2 over 2, which is the same as x to the 1, or just x. And obviously, you don't need to write out each of these steps. If you can just go right to the fraction. The number inside is the top, and the number outside is the bottom doing that, how would we jump right to the answer here? This is 6, and this is the fraction over 3. And what's, x, what's 6 over 3 equal to? 2, because the 3 cancels, and 6 is 3 times 2. A 3 cancels, so there'd be left a 2, and that would be the answer. What about this one? Same thing. This is x to the 10 over 5. Now, what about negative exponent? Same thing. So this would be x to the negative 3 over 3. 3 over 3 is 1. And then how do we write x to the minus 1? 1 over x. Okay, so we're going to stop there for today. We're going to do more with square roots and exponents next class, and we'll be done that section. So you could read that section in the textbook if you wanted to, or try the homework.